Hey, what's good guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to modify a 20 gallon Bubble Magic hash washer. I know a lot of you out there processing at home can't afford the Osprey, so I wanted to show you a better way to utilize this machine. There's a lot of modifications we're gonna make, so let's get to it. And once you remove these two screws, you can just pop this little plate off and now I have access to everything in the back. There's also two screws on the bottom here that I'm gonna remove to get rid of this pump for draining the water. There's also one screw on this leg, the back right leg, that's also holding some more of those drain pump components. Um, so I'm going to take these little nuts right here to cover my wires that are exposed from that pump. Um, and then I'm going to wrap it in this electrical tape just to make sure we're nice and safe here. Alright, so now that I've cut all of the hoses, the drainage pump out, you can take all this, throw it right in the trash. Don't need that anymore. Alright, now I'm going to take this drill with the step bit. It goes up to an inch and three eighths. And I'm going to drill a hole right in the front of this unit so we can feed that hose out of it. I've got a bucket of hot water that's letting these uh, new food grade hoses we're gonna use get more malleable. They're just really stiff. So on this end, I'm gonna take another one of these hose clamps and connect it so I can really tighten that down to my drain port itself. Be sure to seat your hose properly to the base of the port to avoid any leaks. Alright, now the inner diameter of this hose that I'm using is one inch. So if you want to get a valve to close this off with, you'll want to make sure that those match up. So I've got a stainless steel ball valve that I had laying around. Now we're just going to tighten this ball valve up. All right, next step, we are going to remove a section of this lid. So I'm gonna take this oscillating multi-tool. I'm going to use my straight edge here to draw some lines with the Sharpie. Um, and the best dimensions I like to work with are 10 inches wide and then eight and a half inches long. Uh, the reason I like those dimensions is because there's this, this bevel on top of here. It's kind of hard to work around, so I just wanna make sure I cut all of that out. You wanna make sure to give yourself at least an inch from the back of this lid, because there is a bracket that holds this lid in place. Put on some safety glasses, safety third, and we'll start cutting this. Now we're gonna get a deburring tool just to try to remove a lot of this plastic that is melted and folded up. Just make it look a little cleaner. I've got a scraping tool and a deburring tool that I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this rough uh, material that's stuck on the top. Now I'm going to cover this cutout with plexiglass. You wanna make sure the plexiglass is about a half inch larger than the cutout so you can get a nice seal with this aquarium grade silicone we're going to use. This window should be about 10 and a half by nine inches wide. All right, now I'm gonna run a thin layer of this aquarium grade silicone all along this edge so we can get a perfect seal on that lid itself. I'm just gonna try to line this up as best as possible. Start at the bottom here. Now I'm gonna take this painter's tape. I'm gonna tape this on. All right, so now that we've got our lid drying, I'm gonna remove this top. There's four screws running along the edge of this gray right here, and this whole top will pop off. I'm doing that so I can replace these vents that are down inside here. And remove all these screws. It's a 
lid will just pop off of here now from the system. This just allows a lot of stuff to get trapped behind it. So I'm gonna take both of these out here. Don't need those anymore. And it just so happened that my plug for the hydraulic lines on the press fits down in there perfectly. So I'm just gonna use that to cap it so we never have water going down in there. And now I'm gonna cut the perfect size plexiglass to slide down in here. Use that aquarium silicone to seal them in. I did measure those out though. Uh, if you wanna get them perfect, they are five and one eighths of an inch and 17 and five eighths. All right, now that I've got both of my vent covers cut out, I'm gonna remove this film once again, and then we're gonna apply that silicone so I can slide that in there and get those to hold. All right, now I'm gonna take these vents that I cut out and I'm gonna slide these down into the grooves. I'm gonna make sure that I don't touch the walls until I'm ready to get that sealed up. So I'm just gonna push it to the back there. Slide that down, and then just put some pressure towards it so it gets nice and sealed all the way down. And we'll do the exact same thing with the other side here. So we get to the bottom, and then we'll use this to reach down in there and seal it up. All right, now I'm gonna take this silicone gun and I'm just gonna seal up the bottom down there so it creates a perfect seal. And so we can cover up these little holes that are right there as well. All right, now we can put this lid back on. So I'm just gonna flip this right back over. We're gonna put those four screws back in and then we'll start making a jacket for this thing. All right, so I've got my reflective insulation here. I'm gonna start wrapping this. I'm gonna measure out about 61 inches wide, just so I've got enough overlap where I can use these binder clips to clip that on so I can take it off rather easily for cleaning. Now we'll take this insulation here. We'll wrap this around the unit and then we'll use these binder clips here just to clip these at the top and the bottom so it'll stay on. Fold those down. You wanna make sure to get it nice and tight so it seals well. And I'll flip them back on. And now we're good to go. You've got a fully modified bubble magic unit. There is another component that you can add on to this. If it's too aggressive for your liking, um, this right here is a voltage regulator. There are also fan speed controllers that can work using the same uh, type of apparatus. So you would just plug your unit into this here and then plug that into the wall. And that's really gonna help you achieve lower RPMs. But you know, if you use the work bags that come with these, you use the right ice to water ratio, you can get by with that low setting. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If there's anything else like this you'd like to see, things you might wanna upgrade, modify, let us know in the comments. We're gonna be giving away this unit on our Instagram. So be sure to comment on our posts, tag three people, make sure you're following us. You could be the lucky winner. Thanks guys, later.